Hi, I'm John McGuinness. We're just off out now on the lap of the TT course. It's 37 and three quarter miles, and uh, I'm going to show you some of the uh, stresses that the tyre goes through. Nervous, mate. Really, really nervous. Uh, you know, I've done lots of racing here, loads of different machines, and uh, loads of different classes and that, but I still have that butterflies, nerves, pressure, tension, and uh, yeah, just, and a lot of things, you know, I just haven't got everything covered. I've, have I, uh, you know, dotted the I's, crossed the T's, and, you know, as the tyre pressure's done, have I got the fuel in, duh, 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 you know, just tear off's done, and just trying to, you know, it's it, it, nothing really can prepare you for it, you know. I was looking, well, I worked it out, but I, if I'd have started this year, uh, last year's TT, the senior would have been my 100th start, so we're nearly at a century of start, so uh, this year's TT will be there. Uh, so yeah, nervous, nervous, mate, yeah. Well, it's really important for us, the tyres to be right. We've got to get them as hot as we can on the on the, on the tyre warmers, and uh, I'm always one for like, oh, leave them on, leave them on, leave them on right to the last second, and uh, you know, it's just a, a much more confident for the rider to if if you know it's right. Once it's right and they come in, they're pretty good straight away, you know. And we worked hard on that for a lot of years to try and get that right, get that development right, where the. the they're ready to go straight from from the off because the TT is the only the only track in the world where you don't get a sighting lap and a warm up lap. You know, they're, they're straight off the blankets and straight down rail, and it's not like it's a bit steady. You know, it's like we're first, second, third, fourth, fifth into six, and as fast as the bike will carry all the way through through the down towards rail. So yeah, you need the confidence. Well, you know, you just. You know, I kiss my little doll on the back of my arm, but the wife now sticks a penny down my, my leathers for, for good luck. And, uh, you know, one of the early bikes away, so you don't have to sit there worrying too much for too long, you know. Normally away in the top ten, so, you, you, you know, you got the shoulder, you know, hand that guy with a hand on your shoulder, and off you go and the flag drops, and it's, yeah, it's like full gas, you know, it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Uh, just so you as you go through the top of certain Indians crossroads, it's into six gear and keep accelerating, you know, 24 litres of fuel on new tyres. Brakes are cold, you're a bit cold. Uh, scary. Scary bit for me. Start the start. Down toward through Braille and towards quarter bridge is the scariest bit, definitely on the first lap, because those superbikes get your attention, they really, you know, they're pulling your hands out of your sockets and sometimes they're riding you at times, you know, sometimes you feel like you're a little bit behind it, but uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, the nerves, uh, you know, your heart's pounding, you know, the, the the adrenaline's rushing through your body. As soon as you drop the clutch, you know, you feel your heart rate come down and then it's, go you know, concentrate. An hour and 45 minutes of full on concentration. Yeah, I mean, this is the bottom of Bray Hill here, and uh, you know, it, it's one of the most exciting, fastest, exhilarating bits of track for a spectator and for a rider. You know, I explained it at the start there that, you know, off the start line, it's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and you're in sixth gear coming down, you know, just behind me here, and uh, it's <laughs> sort of terrifying as well. You know, you don't really know how your bike's going to react. You know, it's got, it's obviously, it's, it's, it's heaviest as well, it's 24 litres on board. So, uh, and it comes out the bottom of here and just, you know, bang it, you know, it bottoms out, you can hear the belly pan on the ground, uh, you know, you can uh, sometimes smell it as well, you know, the, the fiberglass hitting the, hitting the ground as well, but uh, special bit, you know, whatever, uh, people ask me where I should go and watch or, you know, uh, what do you think of that, but, you know, you've, you've got to witness Bray Hill, you know, it's a... Uh, it's one of the easiest places to get to. You can get really close to the bikes and you see them coming down, it looks impossible, you know. The noise, the speed, uh, but yeah, it's unbelievable. The, the pressure that goes through the front and rear tire area, all the weight on board. I mean, bike's 160 kilos, isn't it? Plus, plus the fuel, it's just a testament to it. I, I often think to myself, I just sort of, you know, I, I, you hold on to the bike, you go really tense through the bottom. It's like you feel the G4 just for a split second and then, and then out of sight, up you go, and over that goes leap, the famous uh, I goes leap on the back wheel, you know, holding the rear brake so it keeps the front end down. So it's so, so fast, and it's genuine, genuine 185 mile an hour through the bottom of here. And you know, those cars coming out at 30 mile an hour, and you just, it just looks completely possible, but it is genuine. Six gear, 185 mile an hour, and absolutely pinned to the stop on a 600, flat out on the electric bike. Yeah, going to the electric bike, they're 260 kilos, they're 100 kilos heavier than the superbike as well. And 
So what what the tyres go through there, I sort of hold my breath every time I come through here, but uh, yeah, they're, they're underneath me. They're, they're the, the only contact with the road I've got, so uh, I'd put my full trust in them. But yeah, this, this bit's really, really scary, but so, so exciting and uh, thrilling to ride as a rider. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that you can actually see the scrape marks where, uh, you know, the, the, the bottom of the bike's been hitting the ground, you know, it'd be the exhaust pipes or sometimes a link or... But it's mainly exhaust pipes hitting the ground, you know, so... When you watch it, you can just see the, 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 the tarmac getting ripped up out of the ground, so... Yeah, it's pretty... It's a pretty wild ride, but, yeah. It's always one that, that sticks out in your memory, because it's straight from the start, and it's so, it's so different, you know. The, the, when you look at it through a camera or on the TV, it does not do it any justice at all how steep it is on the way down and the way out. So, so you're just like, when you're going out, it's like, uh, your bike's like revving and revving really, really hard. And, you know, you want to turn in, you want to turn in, but uh, one of the memories at the bottom of here was, was, was telling the late legend David Jeffries, he was a bit wide at the bottom of here, and he said, no, no, I wasn't, that's my line. I found a smooth line through there, and he just holds it slightly off the curb. Uh, and it's it's definitely a smoother line. It doesn't grind out as much, and you know you could definitely do some damage through here. So it's a bit of a double-edged sword. You know you don't really want to push too hard through here sometimes. But if you want to win the race, you've got to roll the dice and, and get through it. But uh, you definitely ooh, it's one of that a cringe cringe moment when you go through. And uh, but yeah, special bit of the track, exciting like I say. But uh, I don't know. I've been here as a kid. You know, first time. First time I come to watch the TT was was right there up against the ropes in 1982 with my dad, and I was like, it just looked it just looked like some sort of out of this world experience to me. You know, I was like, wow, that's I want to be a TT racer. So yeah, it's your fault, Braille. <laughs>、Bridge. I mean, it's a sort of a, a really famous part of the track. You know, it's.、Uh, I've been here watching myself, and uh, it's uh, it's one of them. It's a bit a bit marmitey, really. I love it or, or hate it. And for me, it, it, to ride, it's not. I don't think it's that much fun, really.、Uh, it's spectacular. It's、uh, like you say, it's famous bridge, Balaf Bridge, halfway around the track, about 17 miles in.、Uh, Super fast approach, you know, flat in top gear approach, you know, hard on the brakes, as late as you can, as deep as you can, and then, you know, you've got to come down the right hand side of the road, flick left, get the bike nice and straight as you take off, because you don't want to be on any sort of lean angle as you take off, then you get the bike into all sorts of, of, of、uh, squirrely shapes and stuff. So straight over the jump, wheels back on the ground, and accelerate away. I'm pretty average over it.、Uh, You know, Gary Johnson and a few others. Just Martin Finnegan was un unbelievably spectacular over here.、Uh, big jumps, big air, and stuff. But I like to get the wheels back on the line and get going. And、uh, but yeah, I've seen, seen some interesting lines into here. It, you can't just quite get it stopped. It's a bit like woo, you know, a bit of a trouser moment,、uh, brown trouser moment. But it's、uh, yeah, quite aggressive on the bike as well. You know, it could it's easy to break some. It could easy damage something.、Uh, You know, bikes are not two, three feet off the ground. So the, you know, I've seen pictures of myself, and you know, the tire is absolutely flattened. You know, flattened to the rim, and、uh, you know, the, the, the belly pan is is on the floor,、uh, grinding along the floor as well. So, but it's something like Braille's, like a more of a, a progressive G out, if you like. This is more aggressive. It's like up, down, bang, and away. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, it's. It's a pub there, you know. You can come, you can watch, you can have a beer.、Uh, there'll be somebody here selling burgers and stuff. So you've got a bit of everything, really. But、uh, yeah, it's just I'm just like looking at it, thinking, you know, how many laps have I done of this?、And、there's a car dealership there. You've got to pass all the car, all the cars for sale. And、uh, yeah, it's yeah, interesting. Not my favorite, not one of my favorite bits, but an interesting place. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I. I That, that end tech technology and where we are now at the minute with the tyres, you know, you can you can attack this jump now. You know, like I say, you know, it, it, I've been into here really, really hot and gone. Oh my God, I'm not going to get stopped. And I've done a massive jump. I'm in the air thinking, 
oh, and then big bang and that, but you go, and then you sort of relief and away you go. But no, I've got the confidence if I do get it a little bit wrong and I put the tyres through too much stress, I know that, well, not too much stress or a lot of stress, that they're, they're going to be safe and, uh, and ready to carry on because. You know, after after Balaf Village, there you, you, you're down into two quarry bends and onto the fastest bit of the track, which is the Sulby Strait. So, you know, if you don't want to have any problems down the Sulby Strait, but uh, yeah, it's like I say, it, it's it's this this technology they've got now, where they've got, they have these slow mo cameras and stuff. It's probably worse for us guys because you don't actually realise what what's going on underneath it. You know, you're concentrating on what you're doing, but when you see these slow mos and you you know you see every the chassis flexing and you know the tires squashing so far. You, know. you guys don't like put them stickers on the sidewalls of the tire, and after the race, they're all squashed down. And, and when you feel them on the rim, it just looks impossible that they could actually go to that shape. But they do get in some funny shapes, and uh, yeah, they're still still 100% grip there for us for the for the rest of the lap. Well, I just—I I tell you what—I've just sat here for the first time ever in my life, and I'm just thinking, this is insane. You know, I mean, the people stand here with with a pint, and and literally we're going past there, nearly uh, knocking on the door 200 miles an hour. So, and it's just unbelievable. You know, it, it just looks a long way down the Sobe Strait. But on the bike, geez, you soon get down it pretty quick, and sort of. You know, you, when I first started, you saw a bit of a sub straight, you know, we had a bit of a rest. But the bikes are pulling and pulling and just going so, so fast into 190 plus mile an hour. So you just, sometimes it's a relief when you get to the end of it and go on the brakes. But I don't know, but we should work it out one day how many times that, that lateral wheel goes round in circles and how many times the contact pack touches the ground. It must be millions of times. I just find it fascinating and, and, and like, unbelievable testament to the rubber on the ground when it's going down there so fast but it's also in places it's lifting off the ground as well so it's like you know so it's actually taking off over the bump so it's actually spinning and gripping and spinning and gripping as well so it just goes through so much stress it's unbelievable and at this point now we've come out of quarry bends and quarry bends is really really important to get a real good drive out of quarry bends it determines all your speed down here so at this point we're in top gear doing 185 and it's just still accelerating, accelerating all the way down there. It's like going down a little tunnel, you know, the white line just going past so fast you sort of like get tunnel vision down there. And there's a little, a tiny little kink at the end of the straight where the speed trap is and, uh, you know, you just hold it flat to the uh, to the little kink then it's hard on the brakes into Sulby Bridge, down the gearbox from six to first gear and uh, never saw it before, it just feels really surreal really, you know. Can't wait till I retire, I can just put another pint here and watch all, all the boys playing around. It's just so unique, so special, and you know, uh, just it's amazing. You know, it's I'm a super bike. There's, there's a few other areas on the track where you, you, you know, you meet, you know, your, your maximum RPM, and like it's a couple of places on the mountain, and you know, past Crosby's flat out. But this is, you know, it's because it's a straight. It's just easy to say it's probably the fastest bit and where the speed trap is, but it it is one of them. You know, it's. Uh, it's getting worse over the years, you can see how it's just sort of, each year it just gets rougher and rougher and rougher. It must be like on a, like a bog or something, like a weak ground down there. It's just sort of, you know, you drive down in a car 30, 40 mile an hour, you don't feel it, but when you're doing 190s, it, you know, things just like, bouncing around a bit, but uh, yes, uh, yeah, just a, it's an iconic sight for me that, you know, just in a few weeks time, I'm going to be going down there flat out. <laughs> So it's just, it's a simple bit, you know, it's just straight, so it's a straight path, but, you know, if you've never been to TT and you're a, you know, TT virgin, if you just stuck somebody's head around there and saw them coming, they're just going to jump out of the skin, they're not going to believe it. It's so, so quick. I mean, I remember breaking, I did, I broke down here for you, 2008, I pulled in here. And I said Bruce Anstey and Cameron Noller come through on those uh, relentless Suzuki. It was like, Jesus, you know. I was gobsmacked as well, and I, you know, I, I, I know what it's like, so, but yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an iconic place, so it's straight, it's a pub, you get a bit of everything, you know, you get the atmosphere, you get the noise, you get the, you know, the, you know, the, 
you can see it in your vision when you're on the bike, the people here, you can't really pick anybody out, it's that fast, but you just, you just, you just know that people are there, just chilling out, enjoying the, the whole TT atmosphere, you know. It's just passed away, but it's his son who has it now, but uh, this is just, <laughs> I just love it, this is, this is, you know, village, village life, you know, the old uh, shop. Not only has a few pies on as well, so I can rub a pie or something. Now, how are you, mate? Good, yeah. Fit yeah, now? yeah, a lot better now. Good. A lot better, yeah, legs stronger. And, uh, yeah, just all coming back online, you know, everything, all the bumps and... Just, I was knocked about. I was knocked well, we know that. In not time, so I was well, sort of struggling a bit, but it's all right. You're looking fit. You're looking yeah, fit. I feel all right. A bit, the old, the old back. The old belly's back again, so... You haven't any pies yet. <laughs> I just said to these boys about some pies on, but it's a bit late, isn't it? You yeah. know, pie if you want one. No, no, it's you now. You can have one, I love you. Right, yeah. Hey, how's life, everybody? All right, yeah, all good? good? Yeah. You're just back from Australia, it? back from Australia this morning. I read something about it. Did Australia, to Hong Kong, Hong Kong to Gatwick, Gatwick, Island Man. So, three, this, con this three continents. Air, this, this fresh air will bloody wake you up. <laughs> three continents in the day. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Can't go past here without popping in, come no, on. No, you've always called in, though, you've always been a gentleman. <laughs> Always have, yeah. Always have been. Always still on the wall. Oh, we're all here still now. There you go. There's the boys. There's me, me and Cameron. And get young guy Martin there as well. We just need another TD like last year. Hey, we need the can't, weather. We that do. can't happen again, can hey, it? We're not going to get them conditions. You can't get that again, can you? Never. So when you I, had the 30 degrees so, no. every day. Hey, you're never going to get that, are we? The road conditions was, were just spot on. Big lap times, wasn't it? I don't, I don't think they'll be ma matched this year, John. I honestly don't. No, I don't. I just want everybody to be safe and that's it. That's all we want. That's all we want every year. Every year, John. You know that yourself. That's all I need. Good well, safe that's all you need, John. Good safe one under my belt and make a plan after that. You've been See if there's any bit of magic yeah, left. You've got nothing to prove. <laughs> I told you that last year. You have nothing to prove in the hour, man. No. Yes, another few would be very nice, but hey. If it happens, it happens. That's exactly. Just safe, get finished. That's all we want. That's all we want. Exactly, mate. Exactly. Yeah, good. good to see you, pal. Eh? See you anyway, Joe. See you next yeah. time. Thank eh? you. Nice pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Take care. Good, good man. Thank you. It's an institution, that. Well, it sort of starts back there, just coming out of uh, Governor's Dip. You just need to pick a breaking point, which is normally the bus stop up there, and down really hard on the brakes. Obviously, it's 60 kilometres through the uh, through the pit lane. You definitely don't want to be speeding because the penalty is huge. You get a 30 second penalty if you're over the top of the 60k. So, yeah, go down uh, wherever your pit stop is or your pit box. Make sure you can see the guys. Uh, yeah, come in. Gotta come in a bit of control, stop in the right place, and then sort of, I just put my hands out of the way and let the boys get on with the job. So it's sort of nice to get a little bit of information off them. Uh, fresh visor, try and get a drink, you know, some bit of, you know, a bit of fluid on board if you can, and uh, yeah, let the boys change the back wheel. And uh, so you get the, you know, the, the the tire out of the back and some and some fresh rubber in there. But I was a bit. I was a bit stressed in the pitch years ago, I was like rrr, rrr, shouting and bawling and all that, but I've sort of over the years learned to count down, so I just, just keep my gob shut, let the boys do their job and then uh, make sure it's in gear, clutch in, pit lane speed limit on, out the pit lane and back down to business. Yeah, to be honest, I, I'm, I'm a little bit old school, I like to uh, scrub them in and uh, I don't think Dunlop like that, they like to call it conditioning. Uh, I would like to go up to Douglas Head and just Two things, just get a feel for the bike I'm going to ride the next day and just take the edge of the, the scrub the tyres in, if, you, if you, I call it scrub the tyres in, but uh, yeah, I mean, obviously the pressure on there, they've got to, you know, take it off the tyre warmer as sort of late as they can to keep the heat in the tyre, uh, make sure the pressure, the right pressure, and uh, yeah, so I put all my trust in, in the team and, uh, you know, to be honest, the tyres are pretty good. Even after two laps, you could probably get four laps out of them, and some riders get six laps, which is, which is amazing. You know, 226 miles out of the tyres, stunning. But you know, we're in a position to, to change them. So fresh rubber in and uh, off down Brail uh, for, for more pain. Well, thanks for joining us on a lap of the TT course uh, with Dunlop today. It's been a, 
Yeah, it's been interesting, pretty special. We've been to some various points on the track just to, to explain some of the pressures and uh, some of the uh, forces and things that, that go through the tyres on such a demanding lap that's, that's 38 miles long. And uh, yeah, so join us uh, end of May, beginning of June for TT 2019.